Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Hey, welcome back everyone. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at VM, or excuse me, EMC World. We'll be at VMworld later this summer, right in the middle of our tour. This is EMC World 2015, our sixth year bringing theCUBE here. That's where theCUBE really got its start six years ago. We've got two cubes, we've got a ton of guests that so we're going to jump right into. And I'm joining this next segment by my co host Steve Chambers. Hi, Steve. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm not surprised much of VMware. We've seen a lot of VMware today. That's you know, true. A key part of the Federation, and it's Federation Day. Pat Gelsinger so, will be on soon, I believe. Some Stormtroopers this morning, <laughs> which was really good. But um, it gives me a great pleasure to give a warm welcome to Adam Wood today. Uh, he's the director of IT from Heritage Auctions. Welcome. Um, could you start just by telling us a bit about yourself and Heritage as a business? Sure, so Heritage is the third largest auction house in the world. Um, huge online presence, our website www.ha.com. Uh, we have a live bidding platform there that we were one of the first, I think, to market with that. It's patent pending, of course. Right. Um, <laughs> but we auction all kinds of really cool collectibles from T-Rex skeletons, coins, comic books, wine, I mean, you name it, we probably auction it. Uh, really high-end stuff and a uh, really exciting place to work. We Sounds do, like eBay. Is it different from eBay? A little more high-end than eBay. Um, we focus on, on the high-end, so $100,000 handbags, for example, or, or a T-Rex skeleton for a million dollars. Wow. Um, a T-Rex skeleton for a million dollars. A T-Rex really cool stuff. Right? Imagine putting that in your foyer. It's pretty sweet. Um, but, you know, we auctioned all kinds of stuff. We're the number one in coins, currency, comics. Um, you know, always something cool. We did some moon landing stuff. I learned that you can't actually sell a piece of the moon. That all belongs to... Uh, Big, you know, uh, Uncle Sam there, but um, anything else like you know, life support straps sounds kind of boring, but it's got moon dust on it, so that makes it pretty cool. Right, right, and um, it's uh, like nine hundred million dollars, right? So you guys are big. Yeah, big just companies. under a billion just this last billion. year. Yeah, we were so close, um, <laughs> but still a huge milestone for us, and uh, you know, we're starting off this year pretty strong. So, so. so let's try and find that link then between the business and the IT, and then we'll get into some, some detail about some of the maybe pain points that you've been through. Sure. Great to share with those, because everybody always well, finds those interesting. We're super fortunate. We've got uh, an owner who's a big believer in IT. You know, we have that live bidding platform that we've had for quite a while, and that's really propelled us, and what's helped us become the third largest auction house in the world. And so with that backing, you know, we're able to get the best in, in compute, in network, in storage, and all this technology. I mean, we've, all of our apps are custom written. Um, we have a huge application development team. And uh, actually, that actually ended up being one of the, the pain points because we've developed all these apps. Uh, we've got 200 plus internal apps. And you know, as time goes on, we're always adding more and more apps. Everyone wants new features, all this stuff. And um, we're wondering, like, how do we how do we improve the performance of all the apps we're using? And you know, we don't have the time or the resources to go back and, and rewrite 200 apps. You know, that's hundreds and hundreds of hours of, of our application development time. So we were thinking to ourselves, how can we how can we give all those apps a huge speed boost at once? And everything ties into SQL. You know, it's our bidding platform, our item inventory, our customer management platform. Everything's in SQL. So it was really obvious to us if we upgrade SQL's you know, get, get rid of that latency, you know, it's spinning disk, go all flash, we can give a huge performance benefit to all those apps all at once. You know, and you're talking about saving, you know, we're a 500 employee company, so we're saving 500 employees, maybe 10 minutes a day, or whatever the math works out to, and it comes a really obvious. So you, you made know. that switch? We did, so we went from a VMAX, which, when we got it, I mean, it's a huge upgrade from what we had before, and incredibly stable, but you can't compete with all flash. I mean, it's just, it knocks it out of the park. The Extreme IO is just, an incredible product. So we'll, we'll come to Extreme IO in a second, but sure. I'm just kind of curious, and it's more of a business question. I'm picking up, is this a high transaction business or is it never fail transaction business because there's some big sums you just talked about, right? It's a little, it's a little <laughs> bit of both. I mean, we have some high pressure auctions that, you know, if, yeah. if we were to go down, so timing about, would be a thing, right? Well, yeah, exactly. We're talking about millions of dollars uh, at, at a single auction. And if we were to go down, you know. Wow, you know, I'm feeling nervous yeah. already just thinking about that, right? <laughs> it's a little you know, nerve wracking. Right? You, you, need, you need that reliability. Yeah. And and a partner that you can rely on, and thankfully EMC you know, helps us do that. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Because uh, I, yeah, there's, a, there's a thread you hear from um, from people who are doing well in IT that they're a technology company. Even if they're an auction company, they're also a technology company. Right. Um, they do software development. That sounds like you know. Right. So you're fitting the the mold of that kind of successful 
you know, adopter of technology. And it sounds like one of them, and we've heard this a lot this week, is Extreme IO and the difference an old flash array makes. Can you tell us a bit about, you know, is it just been the IOPS that you've been interested in or has it changed any of those? I mean, the IOPS are huge and actually one of the unexpected benefits, I mean, it makes sense in hindsight, but um, we had backup windows that were, you know, taking several hours to complete or maybe not finishing by the time we wanted them to, you know, right before business really kicks off. And uh, one of the side benefits we didn't even consider when we moved to all flash was how quickly our backups would complete. You know, those read rates, so the IOPS really helped there. You know, we're getting a lot more throughput. Um, but for us, it, the driving factor was the latency. You know, like I said, we're highly transactional. All of our bids, you know, keeping track of all those records and customers and the items, all that stuff. The latency in SQL was, you know, what we were looking to optimize and, you know, We've got, I think, an average latency of under a, a millisecond, which it's insane. You know, I mean, it, it's really awesome. So extreme I/O clearly a big benefit for you. But um, I know you've got other types of storage there and uh, solving different kind of pain points. Sure, yeah. Right? So I mean, that definitely covers our block. But uh, we have huge, big data needs. You know, we've got, right. we keep all of our records forever, including images. So like those high collectible, a lot of these people are buying our items sight unseen. And we're talking hundred thousand dollar items. Like you need to really, you know, that eBay picture, you know, that's not going to sell it. Um, so we have, you know, high-end DSLRs and we're taking 100 plus meg pictures that we keep forever. So you can, for example, buy a coin 10 years ago and then somebody is listing it for sale and you, you can go and look and like, this is what it looked like 10 years ago, here's where it is today. And, you know, it's zoomed in and it's that incredible fidelity, that high resolution, but that takes a lot of space. So for that we use Isilon. We've got some other applications and, and you know, Things that don't need the, the transaction speed, but yeah. you know you need capacity. And so we've grown out our Isilon. We've got a, a five-node X400 series, um, a little a little bit over 500 terabytes or so usable after the data protection, um, and, and that does all our auction images. So you go to our website and all those pan and zoom images and the 3D. Sounds true. Yeah, um, yeah, and they add up. And like I said, we keep them forever. So that's just. As time goes on, those images get bigger and bigger, and I got to keep them for longer and longer. So. I mean, what's capacity planning like with this thing? You know, you've probably got structured, unstructured data and growth, and yeah, you know, you know it's not too hard. I mean, it's you know, it's, it's just whenever we upgrade, you know, our photography department, when they get new cameras, it's like, okay, we need to <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we, funny we need to double check a few things, make sure we've got a got a little bit extra capacity. But uh, it, you know, it's it's a curve, just like everything else, and. Uh, yeah. cool. What about, let's say, I want to talk about Flash and kind of the, the like you said, the unanticipated benefits. Because I know in the early days of Flash, over the last couple of years, right, it had to be a really high value transaction or really, really fast. And, and if it wasn't in that two, in those buckets, it maybe really wasn't worth it economically. But it seems like the adoption of Flash is accelerating much faster than anyone anticipated because the benefits are so big across, as you said, kind of law of unintended consequences. Yeah. That's true, and you know, there's another benefit that you know, like you said, it's, it's fast, right? That's, I think that's what everybody looks at at first. And you know, you probably got in a laptop, put a flash drive in it, and that's the biggest performance improvement you've ever seen. But one of the things we didn't consider was just the reliability. You know, you, you get a much more reliable system when you don't have those spinning disks failing all the time. And so we're, we're planning it out, and you know, people ask me like, what's the future hold? And I'm like, you know, I don't know. We could, we could be on Extreme IO for, for 10 years. I don't know, that flash is gonna last forever. Um, especially, I think the old days it was um, presented more of a caching solution. So you got tons of writes just going in and out of it, and so you know it wears out a little faster. But when you put your whole data center on it, you're not you don't have those those writes. You're not having to clear it all out over and over. So you know maybe you're only 20% right, something like that. And the longevity of that flash is just incredible. Do you, do you kind of ignore it then? Do you, do you put like the extreme IO in a corner and just kind of? Because you've, you've not got those amber lights all the time. You've not got, you know, losing discs. You, do you just We're not. I mean, it almost is like a set it and forget it, you know. <laughs> so you have like a late night. Set it, uh, forget it. I like wrong. <laughs> exactly. <Set it. laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it's so easy to manage. I don't really have to worry about it. You know, I don't have drive failing. I don't get the call from EMC support saying, hey, send a you know, technician on site. Yeah, and, oh, my God. I don't have to worry about it. What about um, consumer cloud storage? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of, um, of, of consumer cloud stuff. So we've got, um, it actually came from outside the company, it was the driving factor. So we had customers uh, or clients sending us images. You know, they, they also take these big images and they want to know what their items are worth. So they're at home, they take this picture with their smartphone and they send it to us. 
Well, when they get you know a bigger collection, they they zip it up, and you can't send it over email. You get that 10 meg attachment limit. Right. You know? yeah. So so they started using Dropbox, and they started sending it to us, and it's so easy. You know, today, like all these applications are meant for the, the end user, and they're they're designed to be easy. And so I've got my, you know, our our internal employees are getting these Dropbox links from outside the company, and so now they're installing Dropbox, and now they're seeing the ease of use to have this always connected, always in sync, you know, file storage mechanism, and um, now they're starting to put sensitive data on there. So that's you know that's a risk for me. We've got customer data and a public cloud that I have no control over. Um, I talked to my EMC account team and they said, hey, why don't you check out Simplicity? It ties into your existing Isilon. You can store it on prem and you get all the same benefits. Like that's really compelling. Wow. So we had a small group in the office, just my network team, and we piloted it out. You know, and it was great replacement for Dropbox, and we rolled it out company wide. And cool. So we don't have that issue. It's a great story. I think we're running out of time, unfortunately, because I mean, it's, 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 I mean, you're using three important pieces there, right? And they're clearly helping you out, which is good. I mean, it sounds like the pressure of the business with those transactions and with the cost. There's enough to worry about, right? You've got new apps. I mean, it sounds like the kind of business you're always trying to be innovative, and you know, you don't want to be disrupted. You're not innovating. Right? You're dying. I mean, you got to stay on top. Yeah, brilliant. Well, I'd like to thank you. I mean, Jeff, what's your summary yeah, of that? Thanks for sharing your story. I, I guess the last thing I was going to ask you is, is now that you've had some experience with Flash and you said you're developing 200 applications, you said, how has that now changed your application development strategy going forward now that you've got horsepower that you formerly didn't? Or has well, it? Have you really if anything, it's probably made my application developers uh, you know, a little less eager to optimize. <laughs> I think <laughs> it might be a little spoiled. <laughs> That's All a right. great point. Well, Adam, thanks for sharing your story. Uh, Director of IT Heritage Auctions, almost a billion dollar auction house. You can buy yourself a T-Rex skeleton. Know, what, cool million, you said? Cool million. Yeah. Cool million. Well, just go house, you know. Right? Exactly. There you go. You got. The, I get the head. Who gets the skull, though? All right, Steve Chambers, my co-host. Thanks for watching uh, Jeff Rick here at EMC World 2015. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break.